Ladies and gentlemen, at this year's Computex, when Intel announced 18 cores for its Skylake X processor being the flagship, many suspected it was in retaliation and concern for AMD's Threadripper, which of course features 16 cores, 32 threads for the high-end model. This accusation also caught traction because not only did we only see 12 core CPUs from Intel on show, but much of the marketing literature which did mention 18 cores was filled with mistakes, for example, grammatical errors and that type of stuff. The things you wouldn't really suspect would be part of a carefully constructed brochure. Instead, you would really associate it with something that had been rushed. Furthermore, much of the leaked slide and literature before that had really pointed to only 12 cores being the high end. Intel, most likely, just like previously, had not wanted to cannibalize its Xeon range of hardware. In other words, it wanted that delimination between consumer and business users. My name's Paul, and in this RedGamingCenter.com video, I'm going to be tackling a piece of news that many of you have actually emailed or Facebook messaged me over the past several hours. And this concerns Intel's 18-core Skylake X CPU being unavailable until next year. Furthermore, we can make the assumption that 16 and 14-core parts will also see similar delays, and according to sources at Asus, even a 12-core LCC flagship, the 7920X, may also see delayed availability. Now, before we get super into the nitty-gritty of this, I do want to clarify that I have nothing against necessarily the X299 platform, but I do feel Intel's decision with it has been somewhat baffling. Now, as full disclosure, as I've said in another video, we will be most likely be getting a review sample from a partner. And I do want to wait until I get that before I make any like last minute decisions and really come down either side of the platform. And to be fair, the platform itself looks very nice indeed. The most baffling decisions, however, for my end is Intel's decision to have KB Link X, which... If you were to take a look at, let's say, the 7740, it is essentially the same as the 7700K, just with minor clock speed differences, a different socket, and TDP raised to 112. And then, of course, you've got several different models of the Skylake X range, which, unlike KB Lake X, all feature quad-channel memory support, which is also another kick in the teeth for folks who are thinking of getting the... Uh, Skylake, uh, sorry, the KB Lake X CPU, because let's say you were thinking of doing that, then you may not be really in the best position if you've bought memory specific to the KB Lake X CPU. So let's say, for example, you decided to buy an X299 board from whatever vendor, you bought a 7740K, and then you decided to buy dual channel memory. Well, then let's say in the future you decided to plonk out and buy a 7920X, well the problem is you've bought the memory that was only um, dual channel in origin, so then you either have to uh, buy an entire new memory kit or another two sticks of the same memory. It's basically quite messy. This division is also noticeable in the way the chips are manufactured, with two distinctive CPU dies, the first being LCC, which is up to 12 cores, and a HCC, which maxes up at 18. Therefore, it's most likely that any delays on 18 cores to down to uh, 16 and 14 will see similar delays, whereas CPUs which are, um, let's say, 10 cores should be fine. According to a post from Asus's own official website on their forums, um, the post from the um, employee at Asus said, and I quote, the 18 core CPUs are not scheduled until next year, won't have them for a while, either way, unless you're using the rig for rendering or encoding to make a living, there's no need, end quote. So I guess that's kind of that, because that tells us a couple of things. First of all, Threadripper is supposedly going to launch summer. I say supposedly because until I see the product on store shelves, I'm going to take it as there could be delays, as always. The second is that I want to see high-end availability, or rather, high quantity. So, in other words, it's not enough to see a paper launch from AMD. I want to see you being able to just go to Amazon, go down to your local uh, computer store, whatever, and be able to just pick up a CPU, no fuss. 
From what we're hearing through the grapevine, AMD are not really having issues with yields. Therefore, in theory, we should not really have the issues of being able to purchase the CPUs. There should be a plentiful supply. It does remain, however, uh, a bit of a question whether motherboards are going to have any delays or any availability problems because, let's face it, with the X370 boards in particular, with the AM4 platform, it was a bit of a bitch, and that's putting it mildly, to actually buy a CPU, uh, sorry, buy the actual motherboard. The CPUs were not too much of a big deal. But assuming Rajal at Asus, who once again is the representative, assuming he is accurate, and assuming AMD can manage to squeeze out their CPUs by summer, which basically is the next couple of months, essentially AMD have quite a lead on Intel, in other words, it has a significant amount of additional cores available at its high end and really does demonstrate that Intel were just kind of rushing out their, their product lineup. And I don't really agree with this. Like, and I know I've said this multiple times before in videos, but I feel, I feel it just bears repeating. The fact that Intel have the 7740K, the 7640K, and on top of that, of course, they're launching... Um, a new mainstream part, in other words, they're launching Coffee Lake this year, which is also on a completely different platform, might I add. Not just a completely different platform to X299, but a completely different platform to the Z270. Supposedly, although the pin count of the sockets are going to be identical, we're hearing rumours that it's not going to be backwards compatible, but I want to wait until confirmation. It's just absolutely puzzling to me. And arguably... No one is going to want to buy a 7740K. Let's even assume memory isn't the problem, which it is, but let's just make the assumption that memory wasn't the problem. No one's going to really want to buy a 7740K when you could either wait for Coffee Lake or you could just plumb say, hey, you know what, I'm just going to buy a 7700K and save myself 100 bucks on the motherboard or possibly even more depending on the board you're going for. Some folks are going to say, yes, but it has higher overclockability. Intel have promised us that, blah, blah, blah. And while I do agree with this, and I'm not taking anything for um, granted in terms of overclocking, I love it as much as the next person, the problem with that is it's like it's asking an awful lot because it's not like it's a guarantee. It's like if Intel could go on record and say, hey, we guarantee that you're going to get an extra three or 400 megahertz on the core, then sure, people might be willing to plonk up the cash. But even then, it's it's asking a lot. You're asking someone to put down $100-ish, possibly more, on a platform that, quite frankly, is at best going to give you three or 400 megahertz, if Intel could guarantee that. That's like not even 10% additional clock speed. That's not really worth it for many. Even if you take the clock speed side of things out of the equation, the other logical problem is that you've only got 16 PCIe lanes. And if you're buying a high-end board, which presumably you're possibly going to be wanting to utilize, oh, I don't know, the I.O. on that board, then 16 PCIe lanes, you're going to just start running out of bandwidth. Especially if you've got, like, two high-end graphics cards, and let's say you're potentially going to be plugging in a whole bunch of... Um, SSDs or possibly even RAID. It's just it's just a bit bizarre. And don't forget also that the X299 boards do not support integrated graphics. And yes, I know many of you are going to say, well, if you're plonking down free 400 bucks on a motherboard, then let's face it, you're going to at least have some level of dedicated graphics card. And this is definitely true. But it still means you're getting features which, I guess, cordoned off is the best way of describing it on the X299 board compared to just a Z270. In other words, you can't ut even utilize things such as QuickSync. So this actually leads, going back to the uh, PCI, um, sorry, the PCIe lane issue, this means that quite literally some slots and ports may simply be disabled on some motherboards, which is absolutely crazy. It means you then have to kind of figure out, how, oh, hey, this CPU um, is going to essentially mean that this port part of the board may be basically cordoned off. I'm also hearing through the grapevine that out of the box, motherboards can only support RAID 0. If you decide to, let's say, go with RAID 1, then you have to then spend 100 bucks on a key to allow you to actually utilize that. And RAID 5 is going to cost you another 300 US dollars. That's what several websites are reporting. And whether that's true or not, well, it looks like it probably is. 
I realise this video may come across as overly negative or perhaps even aggressive towards Intel, and that's not really the purpose of it. I'm mainly pointing out that their product offering is just somewhat confusing. I think if you're not going with the Kaby Lake lineup, let's say you're going with the Skylake X only, then there is definitely some level of um, interest one can glean from the board. It's probably going to be running at higher clock speeds than Threadripper, although obviously we're going to have to wait and see what the final clock speeds of Threadripper are. And the other logical thing with this, it is good that Intel are finally committing themselves to higher levels of cores, but it does, at least to me, reek of some level of um, being caught with the pants down. I think the most insulting part about all of this is the sheer pricing, though. Uh, supposedly, Intel are planning to release the 7980XE, which once again is the 18-core derivative, at $2,000 US dollars, and only only 44 PCIe lanes are supported, which is considerably fewer than AMD's Threadripper uh, range of processors. And by the way, with Threadripper, that's going across the entire lineup. So all of Threadripper's CPUs, from what, Int from what AMD, excuse me, have told us, supports more PCIe lanes out of the box than the flagship from Intel, which is, to me, a bit, at least a bit crazy. Ultimately, we are going to have to wait and see what Fred Ripper brings to the table. Because it's possible that, let's just for the sake of argument say that the, oh, I don't know, the 7920X may outperform, it, just for clarification, it does have 12 cores, 24 threads, it might outperform, outperform the high-end Fred Ripper. It might do. But do bear in mind that for 12 cores, 24 threads, you're looking at almost 1200 US dollars. And supposedly, and once again, I'll remain cautious until we finally see the processor launch formally. Supposedly, the entry level 16 core 32 thread model from the Threadripper lineup is going to cost just 850 US dollars. So, right off the bat, it's considerably cheaper. So, Intel might have caught themselves in a bit of a sticky situation because it might be that they just simply, in this instance, cannot do anything to counter AMD, uh, AMD, at least how things are right now. I am kind of waiting to see what happens on the mainstream. I don't want Intel to not have a counter to AMD for, you know, a year or two. I, I, I just wouldn't like that because, A, it's kind of boring to just say to someone, you know, in the tech news, if someone asks you, hey, what should I buy? It's really crap to just say, well, just buy AMD. And they'll say, yeah, but I haven't even told you the use of Snow. No, just buy AMD. Just how it's been kind of crappy to say the same thing for Intel. It's just, it's not, there's no innovation in tech. And I think this is one of those things where AMD just basically put the all into Ryzen. You can tell that the company were banking on it. I mean, to be honest, if Ryzen had failed, AMD would have been in a world of hurt. But they basically just produced the best product they could and are reducing the price as much as possible for customers. And obviously, it's taking the world by storm. People are really happy with the product. And I think there's a couple of reasons for this. One, it's a really good processor for the money. Yes, it does have some problems. I'm, I'm the first to admit that early BIOSes were, quite frankly, shocking. I think they should have maybe even delayed the launch another month to get the BIOSes up to snuff. And even now, they, there's still a couple of issues here and there, but they are working on it, and that's definitely a good thing. And the other big problem is the clock speeds aren't quite maybe what some folks hope for, but still, they're not that bad, and they do manage to run games at pretty decent frame rates, even against, like, let's say, a highly clocked Kbleg exit um, lower resolutions. It's it's usually you can't notice the difference. And in fact, in many cases, in many games now, there is no difference because of the recent BIOS revisions and patches for games and all that stuff. They are starting to make up the, the gap. I quite honestly feel that both platforms, X299 and X399, are going to have their places. Some applications are just plumb more sensitive to clock speed. And we can only make the presumption that AMD are not going to be able to match the clock speeds of one of the high-end, uh, one of the high-end Skylake X CPUs with Threadripper. Just from what we understand, it's possible, but very unlikely. Therefore, if you're buying a CPU, for example, 
let's say you're buying a CPU which is the 7920X which has 12 cores or maybe even the 7900X which has 10 cores and you're comparing it against an equivalent Threadripper CPU, especially, by the way, if you are going to be utilizing an application which requires AVX 512, we'll have to wait and see on that. It's probable that the 7900X may just outperform the, an equivalent Threadripper. The issue is, though, and this is the big problem, it's just the pricing. But as usual, the market is going to be the one that decides all of this stuff. And I, of course, will try to provide the best unbiased advice possible. If we do get a review sample, obviously, we'll put that out. And hopefully, we'll get a review sample of Threadripper as well. So you've got a point of comparison. Definitely, no matter what, make sure that you check out a bunch of applications running on the platform which you use, for example, if you are going to be doing a lot of video editing, then definitely check out, you know, how it works with different encoding, transcoding, maybe Adobe Premiere, perhaps if you do a lot of audio work, you know the drill. On the other hand, if you're more of a 3D artist, or perhaps you do a lot of virtual machine work, you get the idea by now. And obviously, at the end of the day, that's going to kind of be the deciding factor, along with the other usual stuff, like are there any flaws in the in the motherboard? Are there any flaws in the BIOSes? Both CPUs, both CPU lines, should I say, from both Intel and AMD could have problems. Ryzen has been a bit buggy in terms of the BIOS, but what does concern me with the Intel side of things is that, well, it must be an absolute nightmare to develop these boards. I mean, just think about it, just for just just from a very conceptual point of view. You're an engineer and you are told, okay, you need to design a motherboard. Great. What does it need to do? And then you basically want to slit your own wrists because you're told, well, it needs to handle CPUs from four cores. And you're like, okay, sounds good. Until, and how many? 18. Okay. That could be a bit weird, but okay, let's go with that. What else? Well, um, in terms of you know, power consumption, TDP, that type of stuff. That's yeah, going to go from 112 to 165 watts. Okay, that's that's not too bad. What about the memory? Well, memory is going to be quad G DDR4. Okay, great. Except if they're using KBLA X. Uh, what's it going to be if it's KBLA X? Uh, that's dual channel DDR4. And then you're like, um, so. How many how many RAM slots do we need? Well, we're going between either four and eight, depending on the board. Okay, good to know. Anything else I should be aware of? Well, you know how, you know, we told you it's going to be a really high-end board and we definitely suggest you put in loads of PCIe slots and stuff. You're like, yeah, that's cool. Well, there's a small smidgen of an issue. Okay, go on. Well, Intel have told us that the 7740X, for example, only has 16 PCIe lanes. Okay. So, what do we do with the rest of the slots? Well, what we suggest is you just disable those and maybe stick an LED light on to say, hey, these are, one, these are the ones working. Okay. Um, so, how many does the high end, how many does the Skylake X have? Well, it has up to 44 PCI, like, PCIe lanes. Um, what do you mean up to? Like, well, except when it doesn't have... 44 PCI lanes because some of them like the 7820X only have, you know, 28. Anyway, good luck with that, bro. Um, I'm, you know, enjoy designing the board. That's kind of the issue I have. And I, I'm not saying there will be bugs, but I wouldn't be surprised if some early BIOSes do have problems. So that's definitely something you should be aware of anyway. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. That's kind of an interesting time in the technology industry, isn't it? I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.